I wanted to show you the process I went through to emulate a first-person view drone movement in Unreal Engine Sequencer. This is an idea I had in mind for a long time. I thought it would be an easy thing to achieve at first, but I quickly found out there was a bit more to it. First of all, as you probably know already, it is not that hard to fly a camera through a 3D environment in Unreal Engine. You just need to know how to key your camera movements in the timeline and move the camera to the points in your scene. You can use the auto key feature in Sequencer to have Sequencer record your camera movements automatically as you control the camera with the keyboard and mouse. However, you will find that in order to achieve the feel of a drone, there are certain nuances that you should consider. So firstly, the camera setup. There are tons of camera options that you can adjust in Unreal Engine, but for this tutorial, we are just going to focus on two things. Field of view. Drone cameras typically have a very wide field of view, even though their sensors are small. DJI FPV drone has a FOV of 150 degrees, which equates to a 14.66mm full frame equivalent. So I will change my camera's field of view to 14.66mm and make sure my film back size is 16x9 DSLR. I am using the DJI FPV drone specs here as an example, but you can google the specs of any drone that you want to emulate and use your own field of view. Second component in the camera settings is the depth of field. DJI FPV drone has a 12 megapixel GoPro sized CMOS sensor. Combine that with a wide angle of view and you get a very deep depth of field. In plain terms, most of your scene will more or less be in focus most of the time. So I will set my camera f-stop to f16 in the camera setting. While this will be true for most drones out there, there are exceptions like the Mavic 2 zoom and bigger drones that can fly DSLRs or even cinema cameras, so adjust to your liking. Next up is the actual movement of the camera. There isn't really a clear cut order of things in animating this, so I will just walk you through what I did as an example. The first thing I did was toggle my camera control off in a sequencer, or even turn off sequencer altogether and just scout the scene for the best angles. Just like you would do location scouts in a real life video shoot. Then from a high bird's eye view, I figured out the drone's movement to and from each point of interest. Even in a relatively small scene, there are tons of interesting ways you could pilot your camera around, so I recommend spending a bit of time doing this. Having said that, simulating a drone means that your camera will often be quite high up in the scene, so it is best that your scene isn't too small. I added some mountain meshes in the far distance all around my landscape to break up the horizon and add more detail in the background. After I got a good idea where I wanted my drone to go, I went back into Sequencer to start animating my camera. I keyed out the rough travel route of my camera and at the same time animating where my camera will be facing as it moves along the route. When I was doing this, I watched a lot of real FPV footage on YouTube to get an idea of its movement and what kind of stunts pilots often do to get cool footage. I recommend you keep looking at reference footage as you go. Make sure you leave enough frames between each key in the timeline so that your key points don't bunch up together as you will need to tweak them later on. You can also use splines of the camera actor and sequencer to smooth out and further adjust movement. After I got the rough key points animated in sequencer, I went back into each section to edit the speed of the movements. You just need to move the key points up and down the timeline to adjust the speed. There really isn't any single way to do this, so just imagine that you're a drone pilot and imagine where you would accelerate and where you would slow down. For example, a drone will most likely accelerate fast in a straight line, but will probably be slower when doing a big turn or coming out of a tight turn. It is a good idea to make use of curves in your sequence of timeline to simulate acceleration. Keep in mind gravity is a major factor. When I first tried simulating a drone movement in Unreal, even after getting the movement and speed right, it still looked a bit off. 
The movement was rigid and still felt like a 3D camera in a virtual world. I found that adding the element of inertia was crucial in getting the feel of a drone. I went back into each key point and offset all my yaw and pitch key points. The roll points were separately edited so that whenever there is a severe turn, the camera will start rolling a fraction earlier than the movement in XYZ space. The amount of the offset depended on each particular section and turn. One thing you should take special note of when animating the drone is the upwards movement. A drone is essentially quite similar to helicopters and can't climb upwards while facing upwards. It relies on its propellers to gain lift so when you add any upwards movement you will need to keep a close eye on the angle of the pitch. When I first made a render of this, I completely overlooked this fact, which was kindly pointed out by some friends in the Unreal Engine BP Facebook group. If you've flown drones before, I think your experience will help you, but you can still do this by closely studying reference footage even if you're not that familiar with flying drones.